okay, Marvel, we need to calm down, buddy. You got 20 movies in your cinematic universe, and that's a lot to get through before Endgame comes out. So if I go into cardiac arrest, it's your fault. Or that pizza I just ate. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show we are finally gonna do it. We're finally gonna review every single movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm your host, Zach Saturday, today's adaptation Saturday. Happy Saturday. If you're new around here on Saturdays, it's all about those comic book movies and TV show boy. Eventually, we'll get into some video game adaptations and anime adaptations, if those, of course, don't end up on a Phil's Bad Friday. It's no secret that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or MCU for short, is a film industry titan. Not only is it the first and best cinematic universe we currently have, but it also has a total of 20 films in its arsenal with another three coming just this year. Starting in 2008, it will finally wrap up its first overarching story after 10 years in Avengers Endgame. Now, I tried to do a complete MCU rewatch last year before Infinity War came out and it didn't quite happen. I had a different format for movie reviews back then and it just wasn't sustainable. Or, uh, good so <laughs> I'm back now it's a new year it's a new me we have a new show and I'm finally ready to tackle every single MCU film. so the upgrade is complete tell you what throw a little hot rod red in there when Iron Man first came out I was pretty excited I didn't know much about the comic book character though all I really knew was it was a man in an iron suit. And and then I knew the Black Sabbath song. You know, dun, 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 dun. It's pretty it's it's bop. Either way, it was around 2008 in my middle school years that I had really started to invest more time into comic book characters. So when I got a chance to see Iron Man, I remember loving it. I rewatched it for the first time last year, and now I've seen it again, and it makes sense why Iron Man was such a success. If for whatever reason you're not aware of the plot for Iron Man, it is fairly simple. Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr., is the head of Stark Industries, a multi-billion dollar company that funds and produces weapons. After showcasing the new Jericho missile to some American soldiers in Afghanistan, Tony is taken hostage and is forced to recreate the weapon for a terrorist group called the Ten Rings. Instead of creating the missile, though, through the help of a man named Jensen, Tony creates what ends up being the first iteration of the Iron Man suit. He gets the hell out of there, comes back to America, gets a cheeseburger, and declares that Stark Industries will no longer be making weapons. However, little does he know, his partner and deceased father's colleague, Obadiah Stane, has a mission to kill Tony so that he can take over the company and sell Stark's weapons to higher bidders. In other words, bad guys. The movie ends with Tony and Obadiah fighting under the guises of Iron Man and Iron Monger, with Tony succeeding and then announcing to the world that he is Iron Man. I am Iron Man. This movie does so much right that it's unfortunate when there is a part of it that kind of fails. In 2008, at this point in superhero media, it's fair to say that Iron Man was the best superhero movie ever made. That was until two months later when The Dark Knight came out. But it was definitely the best superhero movie that Marvel had made. Sure, we had the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, but looking back on those compared to looking back at Iron Man, it's clear that the Spider-Man films have aged quite a bit. That doesn't mean that they're bad by any means, it just means that Iron Man set the stage and the standard for modern comic book movies. And with all that being said, the main thing that I appreciate about this film is its structure. It is an origin story, but it's a lot different than your Spider-Mans or Batmans. Peter Parker was bitten by a spider, so he became Spider-Man. Bruce Wayne was psychologically damaged by his parents' death, so he became Batman. Meanwhile, Tony Stark was in a life and death situation with only his intelligence and the help of a kind man to save him. He became Iron Man out of necessity, and that makes the impact of his legacy so much stronger. It also makes the beginning of this film so much better than a lot of superhero movies. It's the moment that we see that Tony has been abducted by terrorists that makes the first third of this film quite good. Not only is this the birth of Iron Man, but we really get a feel of what his character is here. We know that he's an asshole because even though he was just kidnapped, he's still cracking witty remarks to terrorists. 
We know that he doesn't have any family because of the conversation that he has with Yensen. We also know that from this point onwards, he'll be at a health risk because of the shrapnel that entered his chest. Although this is fixed at the end of the movie, it makes this introduction to his character a bit more tense. We also know that he's extremely intelligent, and so much so that he doesn't let his emotions determine his outcome. He could have easily just allowed them to kill him, but no, he fights back. He also could have easily just made the weapons for them, but he's aware that that's not really a good idea. Sure, he's concerned with his legacy, as most men are, but it's not in a greedy way, as you would have assumed from the snapshot of his character. Again, he's an asshole, but he obviously cares about other people. And that's just a handful of the things that makes this beginning so brilliant. I love the character Yensen, who saves Tony's life a couple of times, only for him to die. I love their interactions. The villain here isn't some big super-powered bad guy, instead it's a real-life threat. Terrorists are scary and people, and dangerous ones at that. I love the setting, having it being in a desert in the Middle East where it's clear that Tony is kind of unfindable. It's, it's pretty great. The movie starts out with a bunch of stakes. People can and will die. The human race could be a danger here, and it's all up to this billionaire playboy to use his intelligence to fix everything. The beginning, the first third of the movie, is great. Unfortunately, it doesn't continue on that trajectory. Instead, it starts to like go down a little bit, and that's right when Tony is saved and brought back to America. If it had ended on this first press conference where Tony is like, declaring that he's going to end the weapons department in Stark Industries, it would have easily been a 10 out of 10 film. Instead, we then get into every issue the movie has, which basically has to do with Jeff Bridges' character Obadiah Stane. While we had this terrorist group as the bad guy at first, now the bad guy is another billionaire who has a grudge on Tony and who decides to build his own iron suit only for the finale to be a big robot fight on the roof. This was dumb. Not only is he a bad villain, he's one of the worst in the MCU. I get his motives, and I do like how he is close to Tony, only for him to betray him. Like, it works on paper, but it made the quality of the overall plot weaker, and that kind of sucks. Now, I don't think that everything after the Afghanistan part was bad. There's still a lot of good here, especially with the world building stuff. The introduction of Agent Coulson was pretty good. It was natural, and we learned a bit about S.H.I.E.L.D., who plays a big part in bringing together the Avengers. Gwyneth Paltrow's character, Pepper Potts, is also pretty good. Her relationship with Tony never felt forced, and I like the fact that she isn't just a damsel in distress. Like, she's a strong, independent woman character, and that's great. And finally, the after credit scene, which was made famous with the MCU, we see Nick Fury talking about the Avengers Initiative, which was pretty f***ing hype back in the day. It's clear that Iron Man had a lot of passion behind it. Mix that passion with a pretty good budget of $140 million, this set the precedent of future MCU films. They're great adaptations of the original comic books, while also being, for the most part, great films. But I will say, just briefly, there are a couple of technical issues that I found with the film. Overall, it is competently made. Favreau does a great job directing, the editing is good, the cinematography is its literally just fine. But the music mixing is the biggest issue I have with it, because it's actually bad. There are moments where like no dialogue is happening, it's a little bit of action. This is the point where you would bring the gain up in the music just a little bit so we can hear the music and make it epic. And uh, instead the music's literally the same volume as the dialogue scenes. It makes no sense to me. I'm glad that like future films like Infinity War does a really good job with this because this ends up being an issue within the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. But I just noticed it watching Iron Man the other day on this big ass TV and me not being able to hear the music was ridiculous. At the end of the day, Iron Man has some issues, mainly being that its final act is pretty dumb, and uh, its final act is pretty dumb. Other than that, it's such a great start to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you want to rewatch all of these films before Endgame comes out, I do highly recommend starting over with Iron Man. I know a lot of people have different watch orders, some movies you might want to skip, Iron Man is not one of those you should skip. And even if you don't want to watch the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, I can still recommend Iron Man. If you skip the final scene and ignore the Agent Coulson stuff for the most part, 
it's a really good movie on its own. You can watch it throughout, have some fun, have some laughs. It's a funny movie. It's got good moments. It's it's a fun movie. So you can still watch it without being completely invested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. This episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by the Humble Bundle, Comics Bundle, Deadly Class. Featuring all 35 issues of the comic so far, you can get one of three affordable tiers to catch you up on the Deadly Class story before the rest of the show comes out. For only $1, you can get volumes one and two. For $8, you can get volumes one through four. And for $15, you can get the entire seven volume set. Keep in mind that these are digital, but that does mean you can read them anywhere, on your computer, your tablet, and even your smartphone. If you were to get the physical copy of each volume, it would run you over $160. So for only $15, this is a great deal. If you do decide to purchase this bundle, you'll also be supporting your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. For whatever reason you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button, I guess. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts about Iron Man are. Also, let me know what your favorite MCU films are. Mine is obviously Infinity War, because there's really no other option. Next week, get hyped for a review on The Incredible Hulk, followed by Iron Man 2 the week after that. And then I think that's when we're gonna start ramping up to like two, two Marvel Cinematic Universe videos a week. Go ahead and subscribe for more Everyday Nerd, and I will see you on Monday. Goodbye.